So recently, Kyle Beats had a contest where he gathered nine of the top placers of prior contests that he's had on his channel, and he got us to compete against each other. And I actually ended up winning, which was pretty cool. During the beat making process, I actually filmed the entire thing. So I thought it'd be a cool idea to do a sort of walkthrough. Where I take you guys through my thought process as I built the beat and all the small little techniques and ideas that I did along the way. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Like I mentioned, we only had one hour, so that was really gonna change the way I approach this beat. And for those of you that don't actually know this, one hour is made up of 60 minutes. So initially what I did was I went into my cool sounds folder. This is a folder that I have on my computer where just a bunch of cool little samples and loops that I have. Initially, I sort of went through different sounds that I could have possibly used, but I thought that might not be the best idea because it might take extra time to manipulate these samples, and that's just time that I did not have. So instead, I decided to open up a VST because that would make it a little bit more easy and quick to find a sound that I actually liked, and that's a lot more malleable overall. Here's me going through a bunch of awful sounds that don't sound great to me. So once I played those three notes that you just heard, the idea sort of instantly clicked into my head. At this point, I could have gone and looked through multiple different presets to see if I could find something I liked better, but again, I just didn't have that luxury of time. So I wanted to hit the ground running and just take the sound and just make whatever I could with it. Those three different notes that you heard, that sort of little riff, that was the sort of cornerstone of the idea that I planned to build. At this point, I open up Spaz, which was the plugin that Kyle provided us. The idea of this challenge was that we use his new plugin to sort of change different sounds around and see what we could do to manipulate them in different ways. I eventually settled on this preset here just because it wasn't as drastic. I sort of liked the sound as it was raw, which is why I peeled back the mix just so I could get more of that raw sound, the original sound that I actually liked. So here's me playing out the actual core idea that I want to build. At this point, I sort of got this idea of a really aggressive, angry energy to this beat. So you can see here, this is the type of energy that I wanted to make. Just very angry. So at this point, I have the core melodic loop built. I go into my percussion loop folder, as you can see here. This is something that I do from time to time just to introduce some more unique ways of adding rhythm into my beat. Just like I mentioned in past videos, I can at times be guilty of just being very straightforward with my rhythms, taking my hi-hats and putting them onto every 16th or 8th step and just calling it a day. Using a percussive loop this early into the process will sort of just force me to be a little bit more atypical and get me out of my comfort zone and sort of hopefully help me introduce a unique, fun-sounding rhythm into this beat. And here I'm opening up Fruity Slicer. This is what I'm gonna to use to import my percussive loop into, just because it's gonna allow me to have a lot more control over which hits I want to use and when. So this percussive loop that you just heard is what I eventually settle on. I will say looking back, this probably wasn't the best idea. As you just heard, this sort of frequency that this loop takes up is a bit in the lower end. And if my idea is to build an aggressive beat, I'm going to eventually use an 808 that's gonna take up a very similar frequency space as this percussive loop. So as you'll see shortly, I try to recolor it to sort of shift the frequency space that it takes up. So that was a preset there that I eventually settled on. As you just heard, it sort of did a good job of shifting the frequency from a lower frequency spectrum to a higher frequency one. And the interesting part about this, as you can see here, is that if I were to add a few more lines, this sort of looks like a guy riding a bike. So that's fun. Now here what I'm doing is using Slice X to add an additional note at the end here. The trick that I'm doing here of adding a slide note and putting it two notes under is to take this note and pitch it down. This is actually something that I learned from an old Sicky Beats video who is another challenger in this video. So shout out to him. So you can hear that note pitch down two semitones compared to what it originally was. So at this point, I've moved on to trying to add an 808 into this beat. I go into my 808s folder, and this actually ended up becoming a huge problem later on in this beat making process, as you'll see shortly. Getting the 808 to actually hit hard was gonna be a very important part of this beat, and it proved to be extremely difficult to get it to do so. 
Here I'm trying to find a preset within Colors Plugin that will both keep the low end of the 808 and have it still be a lot more boomy and subby, but also add a lot more color to the high end and actually you end up making a mistake with which preset I choose here. So as you heard, the 808 still doesn't have much color in the high end. This preset that I chose actually increased the low end as opposed to what I needed to do, which was color this area a bit more. So at this point, I thought it was a good idea to just move on for now and start building out the beat a little bit more to figure out what I'll sort of need to do later on to get every piece of the puzzle to actually fit better. So I go into my snare folder here. These are my more colorful snares and I see which one I think can fit this beat. Now with the snare that I chose here, it did fit the beat pretty well, but I still thought it lacked a little bit of presence in the high end as well as the low end. And I ended up opening up Kyle's plugin to see if I could find a preset that can help me color this and just get it to be a little bit more present in the beat. So as you heard with that preset there, it really did provide a lot of color on the high end, but it completely botched whatever was actually originally there with a the snare. So I get the idea, duplicate that snare out, and I have the original signal, plus this sort of really high-pitched uh, distorted signal, and I control just how loud I want that distorted signal to be, which is exactly what you see here. I have the original snare that's not being routed to any mixer insert. This layer here is being routed to a mixer insert that has that plugin, that preset that I just showed you guys. And here I'm controlling just how loud I want that layer to be. Next, what I ended up doing was layering my own snare underneath in my premium kit that I have here. With these drum sounds that I've created here, these are meant to be extremely practical sounds that feel really loud and upfront in the beat. So these snares that I've built here, these are meant to really crack and really cut through the mix. Same thing with the kicks here. I move on to building a kick and I just have my folder of really practical kicks. These aren't necessarily meant to be very colorful, but they are meant to just hit as hard as possible and really cut through in your mix no matter what type of beat you're making. So next I go back into my percussion loop folder. I wanna build out this beat a little bit more and try to find some more unique textures. I eventually stumble upon this loop here that has that weird vocal scratch. So once again, I open up Fruity Slicer and I just isolate that one little vocal sample and I introduce it into the beat. And after this, I build my hi-hat pattern into my beat. Nothing too extraordinary here. At this point, I try to find more unique textures once again. And so I go into my folder of very, very weird sounds as you can see here. And for some reason, I think it's a good idea to use this sound. I think it sort of works just because the sample here has a sort of melodic tone to it. And it's also percussive as well. They sort of hit at the exact right times that I need them to. Just a little bit of dumb luck here. After this, I get the idea to add some vocal samples into my beat. I have this one Danny Brown ad lib vocal sample that I just throw into my beats every once in a while. To me, it's the type of sound that when I hear it, it just feels super aggressive to me, which if you remember is exactly what I originally want out of the energy of this beat. <laughs> But I don't think this is a texture that's fitting for just the core verse idea. This might be something that I want to save for the hook. So at this point, I get the idea of maybe introducing more sounds that might work better for the hook section. I sort of started thinking about the arranging of this beat that I'll eventually have to do. So here I have some open hi-hats that I'll probably use for the hook, just like this vocal sample that you just heard. So at this point, I try to find even more sounds for the hook section. Uh, I ended up playing for like 10 minutes with different types of sounds. They all sound horrible, and this was a very stupid mistake. So like I mentioned, I struggled for like 10 minutes. At this point, I decided to actually move on to fully arranging the beat out. My thinking was that maybe once I actually get into it, some ideas will come to me for what I should actually introduce as an additional texture into the beat. So here I am creating the intro to this beat. 
my idea was to start off the beat by isolating that sort of initial synth that I built and sort of have a sweeping up in energy and have a huge impact once the 808 hit. So I want it to feel like a car crash right when the beat starts and the 808 hits, just a huge impact. Stop! But this is where the 808 becomes a problem once again. The 808's just not having that impact that I wanted to. And at this point, I just start to feel a little bit sad about my beat. My thinking is I just don't have enough time to actually fix this problem. And because of that, I'm going to lose and cry. So at this point, I spend yet another 10 minutes to try to figure out this 808 problem. I swap out a different 808. I try out different presets. And eventually I feel like I got it to a place where I was okay with it. One of the things that I did with this 808 to bring out some more presence and have it fill up a lot more space was I added chorus onto it. Not something I would recommend. If I had more time, I probably would have split the 808 frequencies into multiple different channels, added the chorus onto the higher frequencies and kept the lower frequencies in mono. But again, I just didn't have the luxury of time. So I had to do this really quick and dirty. <laughs> And something that you'll notice here is I start to play around with these little drops and additional sounds throughout the entire beat. I actually do really think this is why this competition went a little bit better for me. I didn't really get caught in the technical aspects of this beat as you guys can hear. This isn't the most technically impressive beat by any means. I'd actually go as far as saying this is probably one of the least technically impressive beats out of all the ones that we all submitted. But I decided not to focus on that. What I instead wanted was just to make this beat an enjoyable experience to listen to. Which is why I spent probably 20 to 30 minutes overall on the arrangement part of this beat. I just added little sounds that come and go throughout this beat. I have drops. I play around with the energy levels of this beat as well. It just feels like more of an experience as opposed to a short loop. That's just my thinking. I just focused on making this as fun as possible. I don't know. You can see here, I add an additional hi-hat layer to really bring up the energy of the hook and just to increase the sort of energy level of this section even more. And again, as you can see, I add even more small little textures throughout the beat here and there, just so it's not as repetitive to listen to. But what's extremely important to think about is that this actually sort of looks like a guy eating a hot dog. So yeah, the remainder of this challenge is just me spending 10 or so minutes playing around with the arrangement, adding sounds here and there, dropping sounds. And yeah, eventually I ended up uh, winning this contest. Here's footage of me doing a little jig. But yeah, this is a super fun competition. Just like I mentioned, I really don't think my beat was the most technically impressive. There are actually a few other beats that some of the other guys made that I actually enjoyed much more than mine. But yeah, it was a good time. Thanks to Kyle Beats for making this video and including me in it. And thanks to all the other guys, it was definitely a difficult challenge with the level of talent that was in this video. Speaking of talent, one of the ideas that I shared with the other guys in the Discord right before we did this challenge was that maybe we should do a calendar shoot. The boys of beat making, that'd be sexy. Unfortunately, I don't think this idea caught on. No one really responded. But if you think this is a good idea, head over to Kyle Beat's video that should be showing up on the screen right now. Leave a comment on his video and let him know that you want to see all of us shirtless. Thank you.